Watch, you're gonna come back, Miss Akamine, my English teacher would say. I remember always hearing those words and reply with, no, I'm not, I'm not coming back. Those were the constant friendly arguments between Miss Akamini and me every day of sophomore year. We argued about whether I was going to make it academically in college. Since I could remember, I dreamed of being able to play basketball at the next level. But being from a little rock in the middle of the Pacific Ocean made that chance of achieving my dream much smaller. It was a long plane ride home from a basketball tournament in Oregon that made me really look at my life. This is where I realized that my seemingly small chance started to grow. I was feeling at ease, sitting 40,000 feet above the ground, looking at the clouds from my window seat, with my beats blasting beast mode by VOV. <laughs> <laughs> to, to my surprise, a college coach who observed a couple of our games happened to be on the same flight. He approached my seat and started with a compliment, but the real question was yet to come. We continued to talk for a while, and then he asked, what is your GPA? It was at this moment, the feeling of soaring 40,000 feet above the ground instantaneously changed the feeling of laying face down in the mud. I desperately wanted to lie because the truth hurt. My 2.8 GPA made me feel ashamed of myself and my little to no accomplishment. As I sat there in discomfort, my chest began to tighten, and the only words I could shut her out were, I'm working on it, coach. To me, student athlete did not exist. Only athlete did. I thought school was not important, and neither was my GPA. My basketball stats were higher and more valuable. I cared more about getting enough sleep in the morning than learning the Shakespearean language. The echo of the ball dribbling through an empty gym, the swoosh of it going through the net, and the blaring ring of the buzzer was all that mattered to me. I quickly realized that I needed to put that much effort into school, and my bad attitude needed to go as well. My life changed tremendously when I found a program that could help me succeed in my journey. AVID was that program. Sophomore year, I signed up to be an AVID, filled out the paperwork, but didn't show up to my interview. <laughs> I met Mr. Spradlin in the hallway one day, and he began with, you didn't show up to your interview. Being the person I was sophomore year, I totally brushed him off. The next question was, are you still interested? And I responded, I don't got time for that. The next school year started, and there it was, AVID as my sixth period class. I thought to myself, this must be a huge mistake. <laughs> but Mr. Spradlin took a leap of faith with me and told me to stick it out for a couple of days. And if I liked it, we would talk more. I ended up loving AVID. Because Mr. Spradlin believed in me, there were doors that I thought never could be opened. AVID helped me with my transition from being an athlete to becoming a student athlete. In class, I began to apply the concept of fixed and growth mindset. I was a fixed mindset type of kid for the longest time. It was either I'm good at something or I'm not. I wasn't okay with failure. Avid showed me that failure was okay as long as I learned from it. And when I failed, Avid was right there to pick me up and put me back on my feet. School was just like basketball, practicing, and learning to become proficient. I finally believed I can do anything if I practice and make an effort to learn it. Shooting a perfect shot was exactly like memorizing vocabulary words. 
takes a lot of practice with concentration. Going coast to coast, finishing with a beautiful move happened to be the exact same structure as writing that perfect essay. It was about the beginning of getting the ball, and starting strong was key to getting there. The players were my writing block. I needed to make a move to get around them. New move, new explanation. Since I started strong, I needed to end strong. The beautiful move tied it together, leaving the reader in amazement. It was a concept that took the most practice. Basketball was about putting the ball in the rim, stopping the other team from scoring, offense and defense. But what were the concepts being taught in the classroom? Understanding the how and why was the part that I needed the most help. I learned the feeling of making a basket had the same effect as putting A's on every assignment. I found that applying the way I think of basketball towards school helped me get a better understanding of the concepts being taught. I made a second family in Abbott, which has been the biggest support system for me academically. After hitting rock bottom and feeling the pain as an athlete, Avid has changed who I am. Avid helped me stay organized by taking Cornell notes, participating in mandatory tutorials, and rocking that two-inch binder. <laughs> I can now call myself a true student athlete. I graduated with a 3.5 GPA and with 12 college credits under my belt. Because of AVID, basketball is no longer the only thing I want. Academics has now become the most important asset in my life and leads me towards a road of success. Winston Churchill once said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. By changing my outlook and becoming more of a growth mindset type of learner, I believe I can do anything and failure is okay. This past November, I accomplished my goal and was offered a scholarship to Holy Names University in Oakland, California. My next goal is to receive my PhD in psychology and later a master's in kinesiology. I plan to apply all my high school experiences towards my future aspirations, and right now, there's just no telling how far I'll go. Thank you. <laughs>